Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 15. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with our main fuel table. In the last few videos, we've explored the traditional and the model fuel modes. We're going to go and wrap those into one video here, just refreshing some of the things we've already learned and then introducing some new things within our main fuel table, how to edit things, how to go and properly characterize our load scalers into the table based on what kind of condition we're operating in, whether we want to be in an out the end style fuel strategy or if we want to just have our traditional map based or MGP based load access to the table. We're also going to be taking a look at some general editing techniques specific to the main fuel table. There's going to be a lot of things to cover, so let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our main fuel table in our Link G4X systems. Now the main fuel table is going to represent where the core injector pulse width is going to be coming from. So when we want to open and close the injector to deliver the fuel, the main fuel table is going to be that primary source of where it's calculated. Now, we need to make sure the main fuel table is dialed in right. We want to make sure that we're delivering the proper fuel um, as we're having different kind of RPM or load conditions as the engine's operating. We don't want to be too rich or too lean as we're operating our engine. We could damage the engine if we're too lean. And in general, the engine won't run properly unless we have consistent and repeatable fuel mixtures, which is really what we need to pay attention to working with our main table. Everything is going to be calculated and working on top of the main table. So if we're looking at compensation factors such as our acceleration enrichment, our warm-up enrichment, or even cranking fuel among many other uh, variables, those are going to be calculated on top of what's coming from the main table. So it's imperative the main table is dialed in right and then everything else is going to be falling in line when we want to have uh, additional fuel compensated for these other variables that we are not going to be able to compensate from our actual main table. So the main table, again, core injector pulse width, the very basis of where uh, the pulse width is calculated from, then we'll have variables that can either add or subtract against that pulse width that's calculated, but the main table is imperative to have right. Now before we jump in um, to taking a look at some rescaling options and load input options and things in general with our main table, I want to talk about and recap the fuel equation mode. Um, we talked about this in the last two videos. We're just going to do a quick overview again of what we learned in those videos just so it's going to be brought into this video and just condense a lot of the information that we've learned because it is going to be super important that we select the right fuel equation mode to begin our calibration process and just knowing the distinctions between the two modes that we have available to us. So the first thing I want to do, if we jump into fuel main here, jump into fuel equation mode, let's open up here, we have our options. Uh, we have a traditional mode and model mode. So this is going to be an injection time-based strategy. This is where the fuel table values aren't representing airflow coming into the engine. We're simply going to be moving the values up or down to get the injector pulse width to be where we want to be at so that we can deliver the proper fuel into the engine. The model mode is going to be a VE style fuel strategy. That's going to be where we actually have the values within the table represent the estimated airflow um, as it's coming into the engine. If we estimate more airflow, that's going to be increasing injector pulse width. We estimate less airflow, that's going to be decreasing the injector pulse width. It's really going to be the difference, the difference here between having a really simplistic way to go about calculating the fuel in traditional or a more math modeled type mode within the model mode or VE fuel strategy. So, if you're used to working with an AEM Series 1, a Series 2, or the older MoTeC gold boxes, the traditional will feel a little bit more organic as you're working in the software here because those are injection time-based. If you're used to working with Haltech systems, um, the older Sport Series, the Pro Plugin Series, the Elite Series, AEM Infinity, or even the new MoTeC M1, among many other standalone systems, the model mode or the VE fuel strategy will feel a bit more organic because that's going to be um, the basis for the majority of those systems. Uh, you're able to work in that VE strategy. So it's really going to be the difference of uh, more simplistic or more math model, a little bit more complex way to go about it. Now, ultimately, either way, either method that we have to choose from here, we'll deliver the exact same injector pulse width and then we'll find the engine should run the same between either mode. It's going to be an advantage when we're working with model tier, uh, going and compensating for a lot of other variables. If we're finding that, let's say we want to go and do uh, a rescale for an injector size, it's going to be pretty easy with the model mode. All we have to do is enter an injector uh, flow rate size and it should theoretically not have to be remapped again. In the traditional mode, it usually isn't going to be that easy. You have to go in and change some variables and then go and double check all of your fuel table. Either way, you'd want to check your fuel table between either mode if you're making an injector change, but the model mode here is going to be more mathematically based and theoretically, it should then, in a perfect world, 
work out to give you the exact same fuel delivery if you're changing engine displacement or if you're changing something like your fuel injector size among many other variables. So um, you can choose either, but we need to make sure that we're very clear in the distinction between these strategies and that you choose it when you're building your base calibration file. Because if you choose, if you're gonna be working with traditional. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.